whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know why it would be over here if that's it. Is that a car or is it a log? I think it's a car upside down. Okay, look at that. Okay, just, I'm dealing with a pickup truck. The bed of a pickup truck. Yes or no? Okay. Like I am so confused. Wait, wait, wait. That's what metal looks like after it's been underwater for 20 years. From a vehicle. Ooh, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. Today we are working the case of Robert Cavanaugh who went missing December 22nd of 2004. He was actually reported missing December 24th, the day before Christmas. Right now, Carson and I, we just identified a target that we believe is a pickup truck that we were looking for today. We're gonna invite you to stick around for this episode as we meet up with the family on where we started this morning. For families who have all but given up on finding their loved ones, this team is a last hope. Civilian divers cracking cold cases for free. I, I do appreciate each and every one of you for you know being you know, allowing us. But we're also not here to just put a camera in your face, Mary or Marine, you know, Patty and Paula. Um, you know, we want to, re we are first and foremost here for you and your family. So if there's something that is said today or you just simply don't want to be on camera, you know, let us know so that way we can capture it and tell it a little bit different. You know, we're not here for the show. We're first and foremost here for you and your family. So I want you guys to know and understand that as well. What is the mindset as we get into, you know, in this instance, you know, we have a, you know, a letter that's been left behind that says, I'm sorry, you know, I'm, you know, I didn't, you know, one is we have a vehicle that's missing, you know, with, along with a person. It's not been found since 2004, so it leads us to believe that he may be underwater somewhere. But it's in, also in a location based upon the note, you know, that he left instructions as to, you know, being cremated if it's too expensive, where he wanted to be buried. He wants to be found or eventually he knows that he's going to you know be found and is it going to be a deep deep body of water or is it going to be something that he felt like it could have dried up you know enough that he will end up being found you know I'm, we're going to break this down in several ways you know one is jeff you know did reach out gave me a lot of uh, information about the area when we come into these we come into what do we have as a last known location it sounds it sounds like he had visited Margaret on December 22nd um, and left there around 7 p.m. and he never showed up for work either. Sounds like my understanding is, you know, then law enforcement was called by his work is my understanding because he never did show up and then Margaret was called to the house when the officers were there by her son Jason. Is that Joe. correct? Joe? So, you know, the, the Joe ended up meeting uh, them or, or called Margaret and then Margaret ended up meeting law enforcement over there which is when they found the letter um, and then I went through the entire you know court proceedings you know as far as declaring him deceased so now we start breaking the story down and, and where are we going to start searching because it's been since 2004 hunters in the area are going to be most likely to have found him if he was off the side of the road he decided to go off of a ravine we're always looking at the most logical, closest, largest body of water. So although we have a river, you know, that's, you know, flows through the state, right now it's not the most logical because most of the time it's gonna be, again, the largest, closest body of water. They've already made a decision. Part of choosing this location first is so, just so we can be efficient through our day moving in one direction rather than, you know, running back and forth because we just came in from New York last night. Um, so we're going to, uh, what I want to do today is I want to focus here on Coventry Lake as far as, you know, one, the boat ramp is the most logical. 
Um, so moving from Coventry Lake sounds like Pine Lake also is just up the road on the way back to Mansfield. And so we'll uh, stop off and we'll check Pine Lake as well. And then we'll jump over to uh, Mansfield Hollow and take a look at that area as well. Between those three areas, you know, we're very hopeful to bring you the answers that you need today. In the event that we're able to identify, you know, that we have located the vehicle, at that point it does become a crime scene. So at that point we're hands off. If the windows are down, you know, and we're able to identify, we do so. But while it's underwater, we don't break any windows, we don't flip it, we don't, like I said, it's a, it's a crime scene, hands off at that point, other than we may bring the license plate up for the positive identification for that way when we notify law enforcement. Once, if we end up with all three of those locations, um, now we start breaking it down differently. Now we're gonna take a look at, you know, Mansfield, his home address, and now we're gonna start working out from there with a five mile radius as to what other ponds, creeks, rivers are in the area that might be deep enough. Now we're going to start searching each and every one of those as well. But I also wanna know, you, know, you as family, you know, this is your first time meeting Jeff who brought us this information within the family. What information do you have that you believe, you know, can you, that like if I was, a, you know, aging and I'm a guy, I know this spot. Where did he like to fish? Um, you know, was anything ever mentioned? You know, did he always go to the same location? What were his habits? That's what I want to know. And, you know, for, for you, Maureen, it's like in my gut, Jared, I've always felt like he was here. I want to know that so I can, you know, check that off, you know, off the list for you. If, if I were to choose something, I would choose um, Mansfield Hollow because I know he liked to go there and, you know, hang out and kayak. The water yeah. and kayak. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah I'd right. Say the same. Yeah. So, you know, be involved, ask questions. If there's anything we can do for you, you know, please let us know. You know, and whether it's, you know, for individuals like Bob or it's for, you know, veterans with this 22 per day that we've been talking about for years. You know, it's an unfortunate, unfortunate circumstance that I feel like it doesn't get enough attention, that not enough people talk about it. All right, other than that, we're gonna start pulling boats out. And So we're, we can see that we're nice and shallow here. Yeah, only two and a half feet. Yes, yeah, so we had a deeper hole over there. We got started, now it's only two and a half, three. A lot of foliage down there too. You can see the bottom at five feet, but the foliage comes up to two and a half feet. Now it's clear again. Deeper hole coming up, coming up foliage again. Now we're too far off to the left based upon where the boat ramp is at. So we'll do one more scan a little further out and then we'll do two or three scans coming directly in to the boat ramp. But sonar's doing good. I mean, we can see a tree log down here. Just a small stick. So if there's a vehicle down here, it's gonna stick out like a sore thumb. So I'm confident this is clear, but let's do a in, out, in, out. This right here is the boat ramp that we just came out of. So, and that only has, you know, eight, 12 inches or so sticking up. So a vehicle will definitely stick up. And really you have to wait until we get down to like the seven foot mark. So this is where a vehicle would be versus it's not gonna be up here in the two foot, two and a half, three foot mark. All right, I'm gonna say this one's clear. All right, this location's uh, clear, so. We'll pack it up and move up to a pine next. 
So uh, Craig and New, <clears throat> out of a uh, Pine and Mansfield Hollow, which one seems to have more of a secluded location? Do either one of them? Mansfield Hollow is a drinking, I don't think there's houses on it. No swimming allowed there, just boat. But I don't know anything about Pine, I've never seen it. Yeah, it's right up the road on the way to Mansfield from here, right? Okay, all right, yeah, we'll go to that one next. And Okay, so what we have here, this is a very promising location, particularly on the other side, but you have the dam here, so it's going to be, you know, eight to ten feet deep there. The question is, how long have these rocks been here? But let's go to the other upper side on this one. The other thing you have to check in on this one, six uh, miles per hour maximum limit some of them don't allow gas motors so that's what you have to look for so that way we're not in trouble so we'll go ahead and go gas on this one Big rock over there, something else. We'll come back to it. Yeah, then right here, look, 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 you actually have all the silt and sediment that got pushed up against this dam here. Yep, sticking up right here. So we'll come back over that. If a vehicle come, came in here, got pushed up, silted in a little bit. Let's identify and clear that. Right there, what's that? I think it's just some rocks, but we'll double check it. Yeah. Looks like maybe a small boat or something. All right, so we should be coming up on it. We'll hit it like a 45 right across through here. Yeah, now we're only five feet of water. And yeah, it's just some rocks this direction. And what I was referencing was right here. Just some rocks. If it was a car, it's gonna fill, you know, 18 feet of screen there. So we have one more little inlet cove right here we'll check, but right now just looking at it, it looks too shallow. Yeah, too shallow, we're three feet deep in here. And then that's uh, railroad tracks, I thought that was a road. We'll do one more pass a little further out past the dam here. So I wanna check the, uh, <clears throat> even though they think it's unlikely, I wanna check the boat ramp first, and then we'll work different portions of the lake on that one. Did any of the sisters, did any of you fish with uh, Bob down at Mansfield Hollow? Yeah. Okay. Was always at the boat ramp. Did you have a special location that he would always fish at? We, I mean, to put our boat in. You, yeah, to the, where the dam is. I, I remember it's 20 years ago, to the left side of the dam, and then we just went straight out. Okay. Um, I've only been there like two, three times with him, so I'm not you know, exactly sure. Okay. I fish a lot, but not there. Okay. <laughs> But and do you fish over there, Jeff? Yeah, I used to fish over there a lot before that, I did. So did. Did you ever fish with uh, Bob out there? No. Okay. 
and the, so the dam is going to be our deepest spot over there. Yeah, the, where the launch is, it's shallow, but it's just basically a river that goes through that got dammed off, and you have to go underneath uh, the road. There's two little metal tunnels that go underneath. Okay. Right there is 21 feet. Then it gets deeper towards the back side of the dam. Okay. The thing is, I don't know, I can't remember if there's guardrails there preventing you from going over into that side. Right. The, for the most part, off the launch, it's real shallow, but you mentioned that if you wanted to be found, that the water would recede. The dam, they control, they let the water out sometimes, so it gets shallow on that side, or sometimes it can get deep. Okay, and the boat ramp is on the dam? It's on the so left side, so there's the left side of the lake is just a little river, and then on the back side of the lake is where the dam is. Okay, so let's head up I there next. The Was he from this area this his entire life, or? Yeah. Okay, so he knew this lake, Mansfield Hollow, like the back of his hand. He's been there since a kid. See, that's the, uh, the dam that's side. The, the red, red thing is the dam right there. Okay. And you'll see right, right there's a boat launch, so you have to go underneath the road. There's 21 feet there, deep spots, and then there's deep spots over here. And, you and the boat around. launch, the boat launch is on the other side, side there. Yeah. Okay. And you can see for the, for the left side, uh, this is how deep it is. Really like shallow. The Fenton, yeah, the Fenton River goes over here. Okay. It's kind of like a deep channel right there, but that's it. Okay. So yeah, so let's go check out the boat launch because I mean, even at the boat launch, I mean, you're still looking at, you know, 12 to 18 feet right there. Yeah, it's just when it gets real deep, you can't access the other side with a boat. You have to carry the boat over. Okay. Because it, it shuts the tunnels off. You can't get underneath. Okay. Yeah, let's head up uh, to the boat ramp next to them. All right. We'll put it in there and we'll uh, search, the, you know, several portions of the uh, lake. All right. So we're gonna run uh, two boats at this location, so that way we can, uh, you know, one just double check our scans, and uh, you know, make sure we're covering everything. So if for any reason we don't find, you know, pickup truck at, right here, just from this one location, we're gonna cover the rest of the lake. Yeah, because like I said, it, you guys won't be able to access the second part near the dam. Right. With it this being this, that big, but yeah. you can go underneath that tunnel and go over there because there's like areas where if you got a car over there they, there's paths going right down into right into where the dam is okay okay perfect yeah we'll make sure we cover all of it and so with the boat ramp here we may be fortunate enough to you know find bob right here the up this direction although it goes next to a road it's not an accident location as well as the water recedes so the lake is a lot shallower up here so i'm going to 100 percent just knowing what we know, I'm ruling this out. There's no reason for us to head up here. Once we scan this location here, we're gonna head underneath the bridge and then it's gonna be a jaunt down to the dam. Yeah, probably a five minute you know, boat ride down to the dam. What I'm interested in down there is not necessarily going uh, on the dam and the dike road that's over there, but before we get to the dam over on the right hand side, there's more of a dirt farmer's field looks like you know locals would might know how to get into it I have no guarantee on it but it's a possibility and there's quite a bit of road over there that thinking about all right hey I have a dam looks like an old boat ramp near dams are going to be deeper as well and as Jeff was saying and when we were looking at this map there's certain sections of the lake that are going to be 20 25 feet deep right here with this channel and coming out into here you know, it's going to get down to 12 to 15 feet, which is plenty deep to hide a vehicle over the years, even with this lake being drawn down at times. Six feet, seven feet. Ten foot hole. too far out from the ramp in my opinion. It won't be out this far. Plenty deep though. But we have anywhere along here too that could be. So now let's say that, all right, I'm not going off the boat ramp. I'm gonna instead come over here on the right. He knows the channel, knows it's deeper. That's not anything there. All right. Let's 
we're gonna go run the um, shoreline roughly 35, 40 feet out. And we're gonna follow it all the way down into the canal there. He was also on antidepressants as well. And whether you're on antidepressants or you decide to quit taking them, both of them are going to play a role in, you know, they're, they're supposed to help you. But was he taking them at the time? My understanding also is that his wallet was left behind, his uh, medication was left behind, so he didn't take anything with him. His intention was not to come back for sure. And as far as the medication goes, I don't know if he was off, off of them or he, or he was on them. But sometimes, you know, some just decide to go cold turkey. You know, finish running this canal. We'll hit the other side where it's deeper in the 20 foot hole and then down to the dam. Ooh, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. Or is that just the culvert? Oh, we gotta go back over there. I think it's just the culvert the way it was coming out, but I wanna double check that. So I came back over this just to make sure, and at this angle we can clearly see it's just the way that this comes out through here. Very consistent. Very consistent on both of it. So not a vehicle. So let's go head down towards the dam and see so this is what gave me hope at the moment when we first hit that. Uh, we're only, now we're up to five feet deep here. Five feet? Yeah. So now what we wanna do is we're gonna search, not necessarily the guardrail, because the guardrail is not, we're not looking for an accident, but if you look over here, you know, we're looking for potential drive down areas. Anything where Bob knows it's going to be a little bit deeper, secluded, out of the way. That looks like more of a walking path, so I'm gonna rule that out, but we're gonna scan it anyway, while we're here. We're still at seven and a half, eight and a half feet deep through here. Yeah, look at the culverts here on the screen here. So these are the two culverts that we just came through right here. see the lily pads so it's going to get shallower over here so you have no road access through here again we're looking for something that's easy and simple to get into and something that we know is going to be deeper let's flip it up we're going to head on out Morning. In this lake or anything around, have you noticed anything that may appear to be a pickup truck underwater? All right, awesome, thank you. Yeah, we're looking for one from uh, 04 with a uh, gentleman that's been missing. All right, cool, thank you. Huh? All right, appreciate it, thank you. So, being that he is from the area, potential secluded locations. I don't know if that's, he can drive in on this one over here, but anything coming in that's wide enough for a truck or a vehicle, we want to make sure that we're checking like this. The dam's just around the corner, and that's where it's supposed to get down to 20 plus feet. We're at 10 feet right here. Nice, clean, clear bottom. Easy scanning, easy reading. Mm -hmm. 
So this is some of those roads that I was talking about that come down. So this is like a nice, quiet, secluded location. Now you can see the uh, foliage in here. So it is shallower. Only five feet deep. As we get close to the dam, it's gonna be deeper over there. But a few of these locations this is what I'm really interested in, but especially where, where you can see the dam around the corner. Okay, 11 feet here, 12 feet. Clean, easy read, no foliage, 13 feet. Looking for four tires attached to a pickup. Like, see how that's shiny? See how that's shiny? You see how we need to double check that at multiple angles? We're looking for height, shape. Yeah, see at this angle? See, rock. Rock, rock. And those are all. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Look at. Yeah, I think it's a rock as well. But it's a little bit different. We want to double check that one. So we have those three rocks that we've identified, and then the, we don't know what it is. But we don't have any shape to it. More of a round rock, round rock mound. So now we know it's in that line there with that tree that has the colors changing on it. So now we need to identify how far from shore so we can get a different 45 degree over the top of it or a 90 degree scan. So I'm not getting the height that I want from a down imaging. But here, I'll bring it up on light scope over here. All right, so see, we're coming up on it. Yeah, that's short, dude. That's real short. Yeah. Yeah, so now as we... Is it a buried SUV? Well, that's... I don't think it is a buried SUV. I'm gonna spin around it now. See how shiny it is? Yep, I know, it's really shiny. But you are dealing with the dam also on the drill and water going down, but it sure is shiny up there. Yeah, I mean, I have no truck features on it. Soft to my right a little bit. Let me spin you around a little bit. I mean, it just has no truck shape to it. But I don't feel it either. All right, right, it's coming up right here. Right there. You're right on top of it right now. You should feel it now. More of a yeah, sand, a sandstone. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's not metal. Yeah. All right. Let's keep moving down. All right. We ruled this one out as a rock. So you have the three kind of triangle hard shaped rocks and then you have like this mound. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. There's a few more as it goes that way too. So. Okay. Yeah, and this part offshore, we're only what, 30 feet offshore and it's 14 feet deep. How did I, ooh, whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know, I don't think it is, but look right here. There's nowhere to get a car off, I would think. Yeah. Except, wait, 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 right there. Yeah, yeah, right there. I don't think it was long enough though. Watch as we come back up on it. It's right there, on the, that's a different angle. This one right here, that's what I'm interested in. Off the left just a little No, not yet. I'm gonna hit it some different angles. But the truck should also fill this much space versus this much space. Right, right. So it's not large enough when it comes to the size we're looking for. 
But, whoa, 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 whoa. That looks like a truck, that looks like a truck doesn't it? I, I wouldn't say truck. I wouldn't say truck. Look, Just you got an opening in the back. Come back over it right here. Let's see. Where's the back? Okay, I see. Okay, so look at the width of it. We're four feet there. Now let's go around it. That's what I'm saying. That looks like a truck, dude. Doesn't it not? That looks like a truck you like that. I know. So get your magnet out. Yeah, no, look, look it looks like a truck right there. On this down imaging there. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. I see that. Those those curves though, they're they're very rounded. Alright, so I'm coming up to it. It's still on my left a little bit. I still gotta take you left. Alright, see it coming up? Right there. See, that looks like a car to me, or a truck, or something. That's a rod. If that was a car, if that was a truck, Hundred percent certain. Let me have the magnet so I can just put my own sure. two cents on it. I'm like right next to it. If you just want to drive forward. Oh, rock a hundred percent all day long. Dang it. Yeah. I mean, look. I mean, that's look at the width of it. It's like all right. Well, there's our five to six foot width on it. One more potential access, a little drop off over there by the dam. Yeah, I just want to double check this little thing right here, but it's too small. What I'm looking at is when you're looking at it, should be yeah. fill the space of 18 feet for his pickup truck, right. at least 15, 15 to 18. Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know why it would be over here if that's it. Come back over this, because I started to pick up speed. I was about ready to take my sonar out of the water. It's a weird shape. We haven't gotten back to it yet. Right there. What is that right there? Oh, it's just rocks. There's quite a few of them, a whole row of them, yeah. But we'll go over it at a couple different angles. Look for some height, some width. But it was a shelf of rocks is what it is. Yeah, those are just rocks when we look at it this way. Look at them and rule them out. But we got rock, 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 rock at that angle but here's to put it into perspective for everyone you know when we're scanning and we can clearly pick up a tree like this think about a tree it's going to be you know 24 to 48 inches wide and then if you take this um you know grid here and turn it that's about 20 feet in length so if we're able to see a tree we're going to see a car three potential locations were our highest top of mind hey, we're going to solve where Bob went missing within these th three locations. That's how hopeful I was today. So when we come into these and we're as hopeful as that, and then we don't find him within, you know, by noon, one o'clock, then, um, you know, it's a little disheartening for sure. You know, you want to give the family answers right away. We are giving them answers as to where Bob is not. However, like he wants to be found. These three locations, especially Mansfield um, Hollow here that we're at, the most logical, likely location in my mind. We're not done yet. I mean, let's say that he chose a spot over on the other side that we haven't searched yet, that we need to look for those entry points coming in 
that he knows that somebody's going to find him eventually. So of course there's a little bridge and causeway. That's where we're heading to. Just seeing if there's any uh, access point that would be an easy drive off into the lake. The rest of this lake on the uh, northern side here, you can see how shallow it gets and how we're like hitting a little bit. And so I looked at the uh, aerial map on it and there's no, no roads that come into it. And on the aerials you can see most of this uh, weeds or whatever it is that actually stick up out of the water. Once we end up checking this location, then we'll head back and regroup and talk to the family more about potential, you know, like what are those spots that he really enjoyed. And as Carson was saying earlier, you know, what was his relaxation spot? Where would he actually go with family and friends when he did go to the lake? Or is there another location where it wasn't lake? You know, did he ever go camping? And what was that location? I don't have any good news yet. You know, the, the good news is that we have now covered and cleared three locations that we now have those answers as to where, you know, Bob is not. With the Bigelow State Park, at this time, I'm going to say no to that one based upon the aerial and just seeing how shallow it was. Um, I'm not seeing any big deep spots. And also talking with Jeff, says like maybe at the boat ramp, maybe a little bit, but right now I'm not sold on that one as far as the amount of time that we have in the area just yet. So we'll, We'll keep that one on the burner, not write it up yet. Lower Bolton Lake Boat Launch, um, same thing. That one is not as shallow as Bigelow, but it's not highly on my list yet because it's in the middle of a homing or a uh, residential development. Um, where that takes me then is based upon some of the information that we discussed off camera. It's now going to take me back to the, let's look at where he worked. We now know that on his way to work, that the Burgeon is now closed and there's no bodies of water between here and there. But the other facility where the two of you are working, we have the same route that he has to cross over the Connecticut every day. And in looking at what do we have over there, if he's now changed his mind from the, you know, the first time he tried in 2003 to what changed in 2004, on the Connecticut River, what's gonna be most logical? You know, we have the boat launch down at the Gladstone, Gladstone Berry Boathouse. However, the boathouse is more of a, going to be used a lot more. It's not quite as secluded as some of the other boat ramps on the Connecticut River. And that one's a little further to the south as well. It's not something that he would put eyes on as he would be going to work every day. Uh, with, then that brings us up to the Great River Park, which I like this one, but we'll get to the reason why I'm gonna choose a different one first. So the Great River Park keeps us on this side of the bridge. He's not crossing over, um, over the uh, bridge in the Connecticut River. However, and this is only down you know, two bridges from, if we go up river two bridges, the riverfront boathouse is more logical at this moment in time for an older gentleman, larger body of water, swift, deep, knowing that this would be, I'm committing, it's done and over. The reason why we like this one and talking with, you know, find out where he worked as well as talking with Jeff, as the route he's taking over every single day, it's down there just right. He's seeing it every single time. He's taking exit 33, getting off one right hand turn, and you're right there at the boat ramp. So right now, even though we have two potential bodies of water closer to us, I'm going to what we know with these older gentlemen with the, I'm checking out 100% for sure, I'm committing to it, based upon, again, that new information that we discussed off camera. Um, so I would like to head there next. Well then, because that one's to the, to the north as the river flows south, we can then, it'll be really easy for us to just float down and check these other boat ramps as well. So there's two boat ramps on the east side, two boat ramps on the west side that I'd like to go check out. Currently it's two, two, a little after two right now. By the time we get over there, three o'clock in the water, we should be able to knock all four of them out uh, before five o'clock today. 
fingers crossed, you know, the first location we'll be able to, you know, have the answers that we've been looking for. Everywhere we go, we're always hopeful. You know, that's what makes this so difficult, you know, for me, for, for you, is that coming into it, every location we've already done was a very hopeful. And the longer this goes on for the next two days, it's like we're holding our breath every time. And uh, I'm gonna keep doing my best for you and let's uh, not waste any daylight and let's get over there. is going to be a much further down scan than I normally do. River doesn't seem to be running uh, very much and it appears to be quite controlled for a, a river as far as the height goes. And the reason why I say that based upon where the shoreline is at and where your path is at up above. Now I'm sure that it gets flooded and it hits flood stage from time to time. But for the most part, it's within a couple of feet that they control it. So for that reason, I'm not expecting any big, you know, heavy floods or storms or any vehicles being moved down. Once a vehicle goes in, it's, you know, usually sits and stays in position for years to come. Anytime you can see tires, just that easy. Easy to spot vehicles when it's like that. You got a vehicle there? Or do you have a big tree stump? Almost looks like there's wheels on there. It's on the left a little bit. See that? Looks like a vehicle to me. So we won't mark it yet. We'll come back. I mean, we can identify it, but I want to focus on hitting it at two different angles and then we'll put the light scope right over it. If we feel like it's a car. Two and a half miles an hour is a perfect speed to be scanning. Identify exactly where it's at in relation over here. Right there. Look at that. Is that a car or is it a log? I think it's a car upside down. Or a truck. So now we'll come into it from the side. And it was kind of right in line with the tree there. So that's how far out it is. Now we come in here, should be off to my right. Yeah, I think it's a truck upside down, maybe. I don't know. All right, let me have the magnet. Did we just go over it? It's off to the right a lot more. It's five feet tall, it's upside down. Right there. Like yep, looks like wheels to me. But it's not locking on to anything. Why are we not locking on? What is it? It looks like a car to me, doesn't it? It looks like a set of wheels. Yeah, but then this other way it actually looks like a log. I mean, I'm, oh. Are you locked? Yeah, I'm locked, but is it, uh, is it I'm stuck in a tree lock or do I have wheels here? Because now if I come back and we just drift backwards, is it going to pull off? I mean, look at that. We're like all over it. All right, let me hit it differently. Yeah, it feels like it's hitting metal, but it's not like locking on. It's not like a solid lock for me anywhere. Let's 
go over to uh, 360 here. Throw that on, see if that'll give us a better view. Oh, that's not giving us a solid read. Come on, pick up. That's not a good read. Now yeah, there's something in the transmitter. Yeah, so based upon that, I'm going to say no. If you look at the size of it, yeah. it would need to be a little bit longer, in my opinion. To be a truck. To be a truck, yeah. But it also looked like it was nosed down a little bit, too. See, I'm not getting like a solid car reading on it. If you look at live scope right there, yeah. looks like wheels. See that? That's six feet wide right there. In front of a vehicle, right? I mean, it gives square shape versus a, a log. At the moment, all right, look at this. So that is a dock, not a car. Is that correct? A sunken dock. That's my take on that one. But let's hit it this way. Let's go like that. Nope, we got wheels on that one. Oh. See that one? Yep, yep, right there. So it is right underneath of us, right there. Oh, solid lock. That's the kind of lock that we like. Yeah. Solid lock right there. So it is a car. Or was it just attached into something? I mean, my initial gut was it's a, a dock. Yeah. Well, let's get a. So it's very consistent here. Like, let me show you this. So see, you have consistency of like openness, openness, oh, yeah. openness. Oh, over there, it looks like a bus, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. That's what it is, it's a bus. It does, it looks like a school bus on its side. All right, so let's go over it again. So I'll bring you, and I don't like, I don't like going cross river like this, but I'll bring you cross river, then we'll come down from it a little bit. So it's gonna be on your right right now. Uh -huh. Two miles an hour. There's your reading coming up, coming up. There it is. No, no wheels on that one. Oh yeah, now right there it looks super weird. That's because yeah. we went right over the top of it. Though. Yeah. So now we'll come to the farther to the right of it. All right. So no other vehicles there. So let's go out just a little bit further. And then down, and then we'll come back up over it, and we need to possibly see if it is or is not. And the crazy thing is, is it's so easy for us to see a definitive wheel on the bottom of the lake bed. And they're like, ah, oh, hey, if you can see a wheel, you can see a vehicle. But then it gets difficult. Okay, look at that. Okay, just Carson. Like to me, I'm let's zoom in on it. Let's zoom in on it. Let's figure this out. I'm dealing with a pickup truck. The bed of a pickup truck. Yes or no? Okay. Like I am so confused. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, wait, 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 wait a second here. What if there was something? No. So what if you have the bed of a pickup truck and something's in the that's back of the truck, back that's of the pickup truck, and this is the front of the truck right there. That's right. the that's the that hood. Looks like the windshield. This looks like the back of the truck. The this top. totally looks like a truck if you look like that. Yeah. But then this doesn't look like a front end. Like it looks kind of crushed, or there's something else. Well, because it's, it's down, it's silted in. Bed of the pickup truck. Yeah. Cab of the truck. Yeah. Hood of the truck. What is in the back of it? That totally does, dude. It looks right side up. Yeah. Yeah, it does look right side up. I know what it looks like. I'm just not happy with how solid the lock is. Uh, but but look at that. Like okay, look at look at the length of it. 
So from there to there, that's 10, 14 feet, 15 feet. Yeah, you're all hungry. But I'm not getting a cab from this side of it. Yeah. And now I'm just bouncing on it. And now I'm bouncing that rope also from the oh, dock right. is going directly to it. So now is it just a big piece of concrete that's down there? Well, but the concrete, you're not gonna have that long of a piece for concrete. If we look at it, let me come back up over it. It was 14 feet in length is what it was. See, now we're locked on again. So we keep locking on, so it's not concrete and it's not a rock. There's something metallic there. Yeah. But see, then, I, but then I'm not locking on here. Now here I'm bouncing on it. Maybe that's where the front end looks really weird. Maybe that right there. But then the I'm lock. locking on on that side. So I'm locking on two ends of it. It's locking on. It's metallic for sure. Oh, dude, that's got to be like a super old something. Yeah. What is that? That's what metal looks like after it's been underwater for 20 years from a vehicle. Maybe just this river is like super corrosive that it's causing the vehicle to break down and that's why we don't really have a height on it. Yeah, that's why that it could depend on like what comes through here. It could rip the top of it off. It smell like this smell like oil. No, but it is metal. So we have confirmation that it's metal. I mean, 20 years we're still going to have a vehicle. I mean, a uh, shape to it. I wouldn't think that it, the way that this metal is breaking off, though, like I'm, I'm leaning more towards 40 years. 40 years? On a vehicle versus 20. You're the expert, dude. I mean, but they said, I mean, the city it's or. For sure, I can tell you that. Yeah. If it's a vehicle, it's old. But I mean, that's definitely metallic. We're not dealing with an aluminum boat. We're not dealing with a wood boat. We're not dealing with a dock. All right, we'll go over another one or two more times. I mean, we, we know that we have black metal. Look, I mean, there's black coming off of me there. You look at, I mean, the, it's the perfect length. When you look at the length right here, I mean, it doesn't get any more perfect for the length right there. Yeah, yeah. And come back over it backwards. All right, well, let's go get Nick. We'll bring both boats up, gas up. What we have is we know we're working with a vehicle that's almost 19 years underwater. Acidity in different locations is going to be different on how it's going to rust out a vehicle and break it down. What we've been able to identify so far is that we do have um, you know, metal shavings that we're pulling off that are black in color. Um, we're dealing with the black pickup truck. Um, the other thing that I have is we're looking for a vehicle that is you know, 16 to 18 feet in length. The vehicle that I have found does not appear to be a car in my opinion. It looks more like here's the bed of, a, of the pickup truck, the cab section, and the hood section. Mm. Now what I'm having a hard time with is I'm having a hard time getting the cab portion of it to come up on sonar. And that's why I feel like I'm seeing a uh, indentation here and a crevice is it's either been shaved off over time, sandblasted, for whatever reason that we see that in rivers at times, depending on how, how the flow is at certain times of the year that it just sandblasts off. Um, and then I have one more shot of it sideways. The sideways shot gives, us, gives me my width of the truck. You know, we're looking at you know, six to seven feet wide in width and our 18 feet in length on this one. So let me go see if uh, Lonnie will give us permission to jump back over there and I would much rather do that. That way Nick has all of his stuff right there rather than run up in the boat and we can move everybody up there. Thank <laughs> you.
That's like an old purse. Really? Dude, I'm wait till you see the footage. Cause it's crystal clear. And it's been down there a long time. I'm talking from the 50s. It's got those fins, right. bubble type lights. Buried, I mean, buried. Only one tire was barely still visible out of the silt. Right. But it's so long, the way it looks, I swear it's like an old purse from like 50s. And all the top, you're right, has been like decayed away. There's fish swimming and old big clams. It'll be cool to see. And I had the light, so I shine it on there. Nice. All right, I got the magnet. Are you passing you? Yeah, you sit yeah. there. Hey. Yeah, yeah, we're going for a quick ride. Okay. Pick up on it, man. It's got a lot of stuff around it. You're right. It's at an angle. It's upside down. It almost looks like an old blazer or something. I think we'll have to look at the footage. But uh, it's it's pretty old. Not as old as that one up there. But I'm fairly certain that's not the vehicle we're looking for. It's the way it is, and there's so much stuff around it. It doesn't. I don't even think it's a pickup, but it's hard to tell. There's stuff up against it, and it's piece. Doors are kind of half open, half buried. Windshield sticking out of the silt, this or the like rocks and bottom, like maybe this far. Um, it's at an angle, rusted, super rusted parts of it. It's just. Uh, I went around it three or four times, looked inside. But I tell you what, it's it's so old and weird, it's so hard to tell. That's why I was down there for so long. Yeah. I mean, a truck is going to have, you, you'd be able to fill up inside and it's going to be the bed of yeah, a truck. I was looking in and I think it was like back seats in a blazer or an old Bronco or something. So we just, I just dove on two vehicles, neither of which are the vehicle that we're looking for, unfortunately. So 
That last one it took me a while to identify it, and I still don't know exactly what it was, but it wasn't a pickup. It was upside down, it was wedged down in there, it's been under there a long time. The first one has been under there even longer, and that, that's like a 50s era hearse or something. Um, neither of those are the vehicle we're looking for. So Jared's going to clear um, another two boat ramps, and then he was gonna send us a pin of where he ends up because they're kicking us out of here, I think it, pretty soon. There's a chance he might find some. Obviously, we're not gonna dive on it tonight if he does find it, but then we'll start first thing in the morning back in this area. So that's the plan as of right now. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Not anchor or dredge. There's a pole petroleum pipeline over here, Carson. That's it right there. Right there, is that a vehicle? I think I, think I see a vehicle. Right there. Right here, upside down. Yeah. Vehicle right here, upside down. Three stones right over there. I have a second one too. Come back to that one. I have another one too. I have a couple in here. All right, so it's the third stone up. So from where the tree is at, look. Right there? Is that it? No, I'm going to bring you right over it. Okay. You can control that though. Cool. It's still off to my left. I'm going to come in right near the bush there. I see on live scope first. All right, it's off to my right. So we just did. That's cool. Oh, is that's that the wheel? wheel? Yeah, that's the wheel. Look at that. Wait, is that a truck? I mean, everything's gonna look like a truck to me today, especially upside down. Yeah. It's really difficult to see. Okay, we got one. We got one vehicle. Absolutely, we don't need to stay and monitor this. Yeah. So that's where, you know, as we talk about, it's not always at the ramps. You have to look for those other locations where somebody might dump a vehicle in off of a parking lot at a park. So this to you looks like a dumping spot or possibly an intentional. Oh yeah. Up and just put another boat ramp. So, no. Oh, wait, wait. Mm, what is that? No, not there. What is that? I said the plant there. What I'm interested in is at the very end of the boat ramp out oh, here. Oh, okay. You'll see it on side imaging, down imaging down here. So, as we come straight up the boat ramp, there. It's going to be about 20 feet beyond the end of the boat ramp up here. It starts to level off. I'm going to go back over that one. Stand over it. And I missed it because I was off of my head here. You got a good car or a boat trailer? To me, it kind of looked like one of those covers over a truck. Yeah. And it was like sideways or something. To me, that's what it looked like, but I don't think the dimensions were quite right. Cause that's, on there it looked fairly big and that that is typically very small. There it is. Whatever that is, it's not a car. Uh, it's a boat. Is that what it is? That's a boat. 
This is sunken boat. All right. All right, let's put these up, and we're gonna go for a 10 minute ride down the road. at the uh, boat ramp. This will be our last location to scan for a car this evening. Identify a car. We'll go back to this one. Regardless, we'll be back to the other one tomorrow. And then we have at least three other locations to search for the family uh, tomorrow for Bob. So we got the boat ramp right here. So anything will be just downstream right here. All right, so our report is, you know, we ran longer today, you know, because they, they do have the race going on tomorrow. We wanted to cover as much as we could, so we did get all of the Connecticut for, with those four boat ramps covered. Uh, this one is clear. The second one's clear. Uh, Nick already gave you the update on the first location. We do have one vehicle that is upside down. We're not able to identify it, whether it is a truck or a car at the third boat ramp over there. So what I would like to do is let's start our morning uh, over there tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock uh, and we'll get Nick in the water to identify it. It does appear as though they have that ramp closed off as well, but it's okay because I know right where the bush is at. It's two stones up. We can throw a magnet out. He may not even need that. He can just swim right down to it. It's roughly 20 feet deep, Nick, so it's easy dive. The water is clear, so I mean, you know what you're getting into. So let's start at that boat ramp tomorrow, and then if that's not the vehicle that we're looking for, then we'll just continue down the list of, let's jump back over to you know, Bigelow, but before we jump over to Bigelow, let's check those other two locations as well, and we're just gonna start working this back towards you know home tomorrow, and we'll give you another full day and see what we can do to find Bob tomorrow. It's at the end of that uh, concrete wall right there. All right, there it is. We got it. See, like, if you go right to the edge, but that, like I said, how yeah. far could you go off of here? Right. The, the road, it's like a steep decline right on the road, so there's gotta be accidents there all the time. 